Ladies and gentlemen, I stand before you today representing the independent think tank for drug policy addressing to the government of Vietnam. First, I am going to lay out the background, and then I'll talk about the issues with the status quo, and then I will recommend a policy and specific recommendations will follow. So recently, there is an increase in drug trafficking and the existence of a Human Rights Watch report over the mistreatment of drug users of drug addicts over the 123 centers in the territory, territory of Vietnam. Therefore, a public debate has been sparked between the proponents and the opponents of an illicit drug liberalization policy. The proponents acknowledge the addictive nature of drugs, and um, they want to erase stigma and not condemnation, and instead gearing addicts toward treatments. They also mention other benefits, such as uh, the economic benefits from tax legalization. Uh, I mean, from legalization. Um, and the opponents, on the other hand, uh, think that prohibition will lower drug use, abuse, and associated crimes. They also believe that it will increase the health and productivity of the, the health and productivity of the addicts. They want to make a moral statement that drug is a social evil and therefore cannot be tolerated. Our organization, after performing a cost-benefit analysis, believe that Vietnam should liberalize drug use. There are three issues I want to mention with the background. First is the issues of human rights and criminal justice. Drug has long been stigmatized as one of the social evils along with gambling and prostitution in Vietnam, and this actually struck users from the rest of the societies. Uh, in these rehabilitation centers, detainees have no access to lawyers' trials or the ability to appeal. Here, rooms are crammed, and they are forced to work in unpaid or underpaid labor, making bags and cashews for for-profit companies for export. And these companies aren't even aware that their products are being made in this uh, environment. Furthermore, children and adults are mixed together, and they are subjected to irrational beatings. These centers also have a horrible rate of uh, relapse of uh, recidivism, uh, for, uh, ranging from 80 to 97 percent. And anyone caught trafficking drugs can face capital punishment, and this is a violation to the right to life. Second is the issue with economics. Vietnam, being one of the suited countries in the world regarding drug prohibition, is believed to have spent a lot of taxpayers' money on drugs every year. However, legalization will generate fiscal dividend from reduced criminal expenditures and from tax. Um, in general, legalization, such as depenalization, decriminalization, and legalization, will cause drug price to decrease. And that's a good thing. Um, third is the issue of quality control. 70% of Vietnamese provinces see an increase in the number of drug uh, addicts over the past years. This is because the prohibition for, uh, policy forces the existence of an underground drug market. Since, uh, as we know it, drug demand is inelastic. Right? Also, prohibition takes away the due process of criminal justice because um, uh, drug users and traffickers and sellers cannot defend themselves by using lawyers, so they often record to uh, violence, and it is a non-intended consequence of the drug prohibition policy. With that, we believe that the best liberalization strategy for Vietnam now is decriminalization. This, first of all, it does not mean to, uh, to uh, encourage drug use. Rather, it recognizes the uh, existence of drug addicts and, and extend and improve treatments to them. It is also not a free pass for drug selling and trafficking either. Because anyone who caught, uh, I mean, anyone who caught uh, using drugs will still be uh, subjected to appear in court. However, their charges will not be criminal charges, but administrative ones. And therapeutic and psychological treatments will be, uh, uh, will be available to anyone who volunteer. This model has been proven successful in Portugal where the number of addicts has been half in the past 10 years in the Netherlands and in other Euro Western European countries. The reasons now that addicts know that they are being treated not as criminals but as patients, they have since come out for treatments. We chose this policy over uh, three possible ones. First is the status quo. Because of all the reasons we mentioned, just mentioned above, it's not working. Second is legalization. Because we do not want to openly encourage uh, drugs to be sold and used. Also, the most important component of decriminalization is its treatment component. Furthermore, legalizations will involve laying, laying off of the current police force, prosecutors, and other parties participating in the, drug, uh, in the current drug campaign. We cannot afford to see them exist to work for us, which is something that they're completely unfamiliar with all of a sudden. Um, we also chose this policy over depenalization because depenalization seems to be on track with what we're proposing, but 
it actually recognizes drug using and trafficking as criminal and not administrative offenses. And our goal is to destigmatize drug users down from a criminal um, status. So uh, I do have, uh, we do have some specific recommendations. First, the Vietnamese government needs to decriminalize all illicit drug use starting with marijuana because of all the reasons we've just mentioned above. Second, it is to close all rehabilitation centers and reform them with scientifically uh, supported treatments methods to drug addicts because that's what Vietnam's currently lacking. Third, it needs to find a way to connect patients to employment or upgrading their employable skills um, following the exist from treatments so that these uh, people can easily integrate into the society. For it needs to call for funding from the international and the Vietnamese diaspora um, community alike. In conclusion, our organization thinks very highly of, the, of Vietnam and the Vietnamese people. Uh, the country has survived callous wars from superpowers around the world. Its economy also has been growing from an extremely low base and its people are resilient and always want to better the country. Thus, to move forward, we need to reform uh, the, drug, uh, the drug policy, switching from a prohibition standpoint to that of decriminalization. It needs to destigmatize drug users. It needs to reform rehab centers with scientifically proven method. It needs to connect patients to the society by upgrading their uh, skills uh, upon existing to the owners. It needs to, re uh, to call for funding from the international community and the Vietnamese diaspora community alike. Thank you.